Yeah, it's, it's a bit different than that. Oh. Mm, yeah. So, you're a newer, or even a little bit older, but still smaller streamer. And you want to use something like the Elgato Stream Deck or the Elgato Stream Deck Mini. And these things go from $150, $60, or even $200. And these things are crazy expensive. And you want to use one on your stream to make amazing transitions like mine. Well, today I'm going to show you amazing alternatives like Touch Portal or Deck Board. And they run off of your mobile phone and are completely free. All that and more on today's KCS Tech. So, the Stream Deck. It helps enhance your streams, which you guys do want to see how it enhances my stream. Go down to the link below. I stream every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I will answer your guys' questions and do so, so, so much more. And I also want to hear a comment down in the description below. Because I'm thinking about doing a community night where I do stuff with the community. And it's all going to be on Thursdays. Just be fun and kind of do something different. So yeah. But jumping into the actual video, stream decks and stuff like that are actually quite expensive. I don't even own one. And they're about $60 to $150 to even $200 with the Stream Deck XL. So today, we're going to show you two alternatives, but a little bit of a preface. To start, we are using a Android phone running on Android 8.0. And this is the Moto Z Force. This is a great little phone. I have been using it as a daily driver for a while. Yes, it has a built-in case. Wow. But yeah, it's a great little phone and it works great for other purposes. And it has a pretty good screen, which is something you'll want. I'm also using a Wii U gamepad thing. This came with a Wii U. Yeah, I bought one of these. Not for Mario Maker for Splatoon, but basically what this thing does is it holds your Wii U. And it's pretty simple. But I'm using it mostly to hold my phone. Night with like a nice stand. It works pretty well for that. You could probably use paper or a bunch of other things. I'm just using my resources. You can easily set it up on a box. Or if you just want to lay it flat and use it like that, that's probably fine too. So start off these free stream deck apps, we're going to use Touch Portal. Touch Portal being developed by Touch Portal and has a paid version for $12.99. And the free version, you get a six by two grid and it has a great community behind it. You can join their Discord, which I will leave a link in the description below, just so you guys can go join and get it if you guys find it useful. And this can perform OS functions, perform with Twitter, Twitch, Hue, and OBS Streamlabs, XSplit, and OBS itself. It has many, 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 many functions, and you can configure it all on your 6x2 grid, which you get for free, or if you pay, you can get as big as a grid as you want. And next we have Deckboard, being developed by Riva Furby. I'm gonna say it like that, I'm sorry, but that's it. It is completely free, but you can support the devs by doing their like coffee thing. I think it's called Coffee Tea or something like that. I'll leave it in the description below. You guys do go support him. It's an amazing app. But it's completely free and completely open source and gives you full access from a 3x2 up to a 9x7 grid upon your screen. And it has full integration like Stream. And this has integration with things like Twitter, Twitch, OBS, Streamlabs OBS, XSplit. No Hue integration like unlike Touch, Touch Portal, but it does have Spotify integration. And it has full integration with your OS and can do stuff like multi-actions and stuff like that, which also Touch Portal can do as well. For this, you have to hook them up either via USB or through Wi-Fi. I usually use Wi-Fi for mine because the USB function on my phone is a little bit weird, but if you're on iOS, it should work a little bit better. But basically the usage of the software, you go into it, you set up an icon and you can set up certain functions such as a multi-action, which is what I use for my transitions. For example, you will hit your transition and then it'll wait about three, four, five seconds and it'll trigger it and then it'll transition behind it. And then maybe you can make it so it turns on your monitor over it and then you make the monitor disappear and then it shows your game, your camera back and fades it out. That's how I do stuff like my complicated transitions. And if you want to learn how to do those much better than I could ever explain it, I'll leave the link in the description below. Harris Heller has an amazing video talking about how to do it and the advanced transitions behind it. It's great, but if you do want to learn it, I basically just gave you a basic outline and you can just keep looking at it. It's kind of hard to learn and you have to be able to animate your transitions to do things you want. But basic functions of this are like changing your scenes, muting yourself, um, for things like Spotify, you can usually play and pause, find certain things for a certain artist, which is actually really cool. And then with you, you can make it so your lights change certain colors depending on the specific thing. And so, so, so much more. And you also have things that like will trigger certain applications to start certain batch files, certain hotkeys to happen, pressing certain keys within your software. And all of this is completely controlled by your pads. You can just tap it and it'll completely activate it and completely do it for you. Okay, so these sound all amazing and stuff and they do they work really great and trigger things to happen on your streams and they really do work amazingly and they do take a little bit of skill to learn but they are better than doing say a numpad one i actually created a numpad one to do these functions before i knew about these softwares and it took forever to create and it didn't work that well mostly because functions wouldn't come through all the right and it just never worked correctly and it never worked how i wanted it to 
but there is a downside to these softwares mostly that they're not plugged into your computer they don't have full access to your computer they don't know what everything's going on on your computer so for you say so say for example you have a thing that like pushes a button like say two on the numpad and it will trigger your music to stop well, if you program your software in, say, Touch Portal to do that, it actually won't work correctly and it'll actually not work at all for you, which is bad. It just won't do anything towards that, but it'll just press the key because it doesn't know what it's doing. And yes, Touch Portal in this regard works a little better. It'll tell it, this is the software you do it in and do it. And basically, you can hopefully trigger it to do that. But I've had issues getting it to work inside of that board itself, but Touch Bar will just completely does it. Apparently doesn't know what to do with it. And there's a downside with these things. Also, disconnection. If your Wi-Fi goes down at all, if your Wi-Fi fluctuates at all, if anything changes with your Wi-Fi or anything, it will have to be completely reset up and redo it. So if you close the software on your phone and you restart it, it doesn't have a memory to go back into and TouchBook tries to, but it just doesn't work out very well for that. Another downside of these things is that multi-action sometimes don't trigger right. They don't trigger their commands in series correctly. Mostly because they just have issues doing it and it doesn't really work all the time. There is some downsides to these things at all with that, but they just don't trigger right all the time. And there's a few downsides with them because of that. They don't always trigger right, which makes that my multi action transition won't always trigger the same, which makes it a little bit complicated to work with it. But I think that is just OBS having trouble seeing it. And there's also always going to be a delay. Push the button, there's going to be a little bit of a delay. Not a lot, but if you add a delay, obviously it's going to be even longer. So you should take that fluctuation in with it. And also, they're not as integrated with things such as the Stream Deck. The Stream Deck is physical buttons, so if you push on your phone, and it also is taking your phone and putting it into use, which means it's going to drain battery. It does mean it's completely wireless if you're using the Wi-Fi one, which means you could literally set it on your bed and play and pause Spotify music, for example, when it works, because Deckboard, I've had issues actually getting Spotify to work. It does not work with my account. I've ran Spotify, I've closed Spotify, I've done everything with Spotify. <laughs> And basically none of it works at all um yeah but if you can get it to work you could literally make it wireless but the problem is it's battery operated which means if your phone dies you're out of the springboard and also you do not have things with integration with things such as the elgato capture cards the elgato key light which means that you can't control your key lights and things like that if you own those things on it but if you're in a budget range like i'm talking about in this video you're probably not in that area to begin with but that's okay. So let's talk about a little bit of the differences. So Touch Portal, I've seen to be a little bit more finicky. I had an issue for about a whole Sunday morning. I'd been up for about 24 hours at that point and I sat down and I tried to learn how to do it and get it right. And Touch Portal just outright refused to work most of the time. Touch Portal just did not like me, <laughs> like at all. Touch Portal just did not want to work with it. Basically what Touch Portal was having issues with was, um, it didn't want to do something or something like that. And I had to go through and do a bunch of things. But to be fair, their Discord community was super helpful. And they have a ton of support for them. So if you're having issues, you can get help with it. But Deckboard worked straight out of the box. I did have no issues. I just signed it with all my software. And it worked great. Also, Touch Portal has some nicer features like, say, creating a clip. Creating some things. But Touch Deckboard can't do that. And also, Deckboard also has a few issues with a few things but deckboard makes it a lot easier to change intermission in between certain screens i'll say for example you have a stream screen and then you have a screen for just working in premiere pro and then another one for photoshop you can have all those little folders on there and it'll work instantly i've had issues getting touch portal to actually work with it and see those pages and actually just completely not really work and touch portal is very very inconsistent on button presses because they are very inconsistent in their connections I'm not saying it's bad by any means. I'm just saying that they're inconsistent by their measures of seeing it. Like, just completely in idle. So, also, another advantage with this, I didn't really talk about it in the last section because I kind of forgot about it, is add-ons. You can add add-ons, for example, inside of Deckboard. You can add an add-on that'll let you run Steam games. So, you can start off a specific Steam game from your Deckboard, which is just really neat. Which means you can add shortcuts to, say, Apex Legends or Overwatch. And you can just start them straight up from your deck board. You can also add voice meter add-ons, which means you can change your pitch immediately, turn on and off your voice meter. It makes it very integrated with the computer. Touch Portal has other add-ons as well, but I'm not as familiar with it. I think Touch Portal is always feels a little bit more primitive in this design. Like adding in, say, a timer and doing a add-on for it. It's actually a lot harder and doesn't work as well within Touch Portal as it does within 
deckboard, you add in a custom timer and it works great. And it always works and it does it perfectly. And it's always consistent working within milliseconds. But deckboard or touchboard doesn't work consistently within its millisecond range, which is just weird to me. But it just completely and utterly fails out at some points and just refuses to work with it. And also, touchboard will have very weird integration within things such as Twitch. And it's very cryptic on how it does it clips, how it does its clips. So it makes it a little bit hard to do it that way. But I think that it always depends on that. And there's a few definitely downsides with Deckboard as well. Deckboard also has just complete and not working with Spotify, like I said previously. But I've also had issues with Deckboard just um, not always working on button presses, which is an issue with both of them. You press the button and it'll do nothing. And also Deckboard really doesn't like saving when you just close it you have to save it and then close it but i totally get why they want to make sure you are trying to put that action into place and also i feel like a little it feels a little bit more limited with inside within um deck board it's very mainstream into the point saying okay this is how you do it but touch portal is a little bit more open and once you completely do stuff like say maybe you got a follower on twitch and it goes off with a notification on your twitch and it triggers it and then in your hue it'll go off and do a certain effect or you can hit the button and it'll do it kind of things like that it's really cool really neat. so in conclusion i want to talk, tell you guys which one i'm using right now currently which is deck board i've been using deck board for about two three weeks mostly because it works better for what i'm doing which is full integration into computers if you're someone who has a ton of huge stuff a ton of stuff that it wants to be integrated into a complete system I completely understand using Touch Portal, but my main reason for using it, A, it's open source, which means there's very much easy work with and easy to fix problems. It's completely free, which means you can use full grids, small grids, and just you go all around with them and just do a bunch of stuff with it. And it makes it just work amazingly. And also Touch Portal, I've just had so many issues with working on my network, working with specific things. And it's just, it's just really hard to work with a lot. And it's very hard to connect with Touch Portal because they don't always see each other and they don't always like each other. I had complete issues when I was recording the B-Wolf for this episode that just refused to connect. I set up everything right and just refused to connect. So that specific IP. And then in deck board, it was simple as hitting the QRO code scanner and putting it up to the screen and completely scans it and works perfectly. It's amazing and it's really great when it works. Like it's genuinely an amazing software. I think deck board's personally the best for me. It works great for my setup, which is trying to integrate it into a whole computer setup. But yeah, so this does beg the question, is this better than a, de a actual stream deck? No, not by a long shot. Stream deck software is a bit, is much, much less limited. It does so, so much more. It can do complete and utter control of key lights, integration in specific things, and it just works great, all things considered. Like just genuinely, the stream deck is an amazing piece of thing, but for starting streamers and people that just want to change scenes, mute themselves, just do stuff like that. If they're not trying to edit with their stream decks and do stuff like that, I think Touch Portal or, or Deck Board, whatever one you think will work best for your setup. This is not a saying, well, I think Touch Portal's bad. Touch Portal didn't work great on my computer. And I want to make stress that I am not dissing on Touch Portal. I used Touch Portal for about three, four weeks and it worked great for me. But the problem was I never found it very well put together. And I just had so many issues alongside it. It's just, there was a lot of problems with it. So yeah. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, get subscribed, and hit the bell notification so you guys can see more when uploads come out. Also, I am live on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday on Twitch, link in the description below. And yeah, so you guys can ask me questions about my deck board and or my touch portal and my thoughts about how to set up specific things. And heck, if you want to watch the VOD that I did last week where I actually set up a thing inside of Deckboard, I can show you guys that. It's really, really neat. So, yeah. I did it all on stream, and I'm planning on doing more of those on Thursdays. Thursdays are going to be more of a community day. Join in, come chat, and I'm going to do some work. Either editing, working on some new transitions, new logos, new stuff. And if you guys are interested in getting alerts and things like that, I want to make this very public. If you guys want to learn and get some alerts or get some overlays or something like that on Twitch, I will be doing free ones at some point. I'm not sure when I'm going to set them up. I am planning on doing free ones for people not paid at all. You just need to contact me um, privately asking me about certain things. And the only caveat with it is that I'm going to want to design it on stream. That's the only caveat. If you guys really don't care if you're designing scene at other places, please do contact me. I will be able to help you guys design a very good, clean looking setup and use some specific widgets that'll make it look really, really special and really, really nice. 
So other than that, guys, I will see you guys next time. Have fun.